Hey there, everyone. Welcome to, I don't know what we're calling this. What are we calling this, Katie? Take Your Questions Tuesday here at the Interior Design Advocate. We'll just keep making up titles as we go. I'm Donna Hoffman. I am your Interior Design Advocate and your advocate in all things design. We want to get you motivated and protected and creating those gorgeous homes that I know you want to create for yourself. So I'm here to take your questions live. Can't wait to hear from you. And as I'm waiting for some of your questions to come in, I had told you last week, because we're here every Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern, I told you last week I was going to be talking to you about your new home, what nobody's telling you about what it takes to furnish and fill it. And I know this time of year is just the time of year when the spring real estate market is about to pop and open up. So um, not only am I going to be speaking about your new home for those of you who are looking now to purchase a home, but some of you have just moved into a home. In fact, I offered some workshops a couple of weeks ago, some free online workshops, and I like to pop out a little early, see who's uh, shown up early, women after my own heart, my early arrivals, and I like to see who's in the class, so I know if I have to amend my information at all. And one of the questions I asked was, are you working on a current residence or are you working on a new residence, either a home you just moved into within, within the year or are you about to move? And are you working and or are you working on a renovation? Are you kind of turning your home into a newer space by adding on to it? And about a third of the people are in new home mood mode, I should say. About a third of the peeps uh, were consistently in that renovation mode, and about a third of the people in my workshops was about uh, about a third, yes, roughly, were in working on their own home. And we had over 4,000 people register for these workshops. So it was a pretty good cross-section of people as we were always asking this question before our workshops started. So I really wanted to pop out here today to help manage your expectations about the costs. Uh, what's really involved to furnish and fill that new home? Now, let's face facts. When you are home hunting, whether you're moving to an upsize or a downsize, doesn't matter how many rooms you're moving into, it's the upsize or the downsize that we're talking about. When you're doing that and looking at new spaces, I know that you are not fantasizing about throwing that wonderful new Christmas party once you're in the home in a half-baked dining room. I know you're not picturing yourself living in rooms that are cobbled together. I know you're having fantasies about the great parties you're gonna throw or having your book club in or having your family over. So as you're home hunting, house hunting, apartment hunting, I want you to really be careful and honest with yourself. And if you have a partner or a significant other, I want you to be really candid with each other about what your expectations are for when and what is going to be the design timeline that you're both going to want to be hitting? For example, some of the stumbling blocks. When you upsize, much of the furniture you already own will be swallowed up because now you're going to have many more rooms to fill and also larger square footage, larger rooms, which means that when you upsize, a lot of what you already own is too small and pro proportionally to what needs to go into those rooms. On the other side of that, when you downsize, you own a lot more than your new space will accept, and a lot of what you own will be too large. And if you're doing a renovation or an addition, very often the way you're picturing that your furniture is going to fit in that new space may not be quite so, because room shape, uh, doorways, entry points, windows, these all affect how your furniture maps out. So the bottom line is, is that it costs a lot more to furnish and fill an entire home than anybody wants it to, realizes it does, or ever hoped it would. So let's look at the windows alone. Let's say you're looking to purchase a home or move into a home that's about 32, 3,400 square feet. The average 3,400 square foot home has about 16 to 19 windows. So let's be conservative. Let's say you have 19. We'll round it to 20, make, it, make the math easy. So you have 20 windows now that need to be covered. Well, Don, you say, I'm, I'm not building new, so I know I can reuse what the former homeowner had. Well, yeah, you can, but if you're a true design lover, and I know many of you are, what's the likelihood that you're going to like the taste that was already put into that home? And if you do like the design aesthetic that was in that home, what's the likelihood that the colors will all work with what you're trying to bring into your new home? So you're seeing that the odds are diminishing and diminishing. So let's say you are building from scratch and you need to think about what am I going to do budget-wise for my windows? 
Well, I was just noodling around a little earlier today on the Smith & Noble um, website. So let's just say on a single window in your dining room, your new dining room, there's one window. And Smith & Noble, you can do a, a decent pair of drapes, let's say, for about $1,000. Well, I said 19 windows. And that's the entry level of drapery. So what if we say, just to kind of give you some wiggle room, let's say that you have about $1,500 allowance for all 20 of your windows. That means that in your new home, you could sneeze on 20 windows and you could spend $30,000 on just your window coverings. Gulp, I heard that faint out there. Well, window treatments are a big hit to a budget when you're moving into a new home. And if you're thinking about custom in my world, we're not talking about an average of $1,000 or $1,500 for a window treatment. We're probably more like looking at like $60,000 as an average to get those 20 windows covered, maybe some solar shades, maybe some layered treatments, a Roman with some panels over it. So just trying to paint the picture for you that moving, furnishing is always a lot more costly than people realize it's going to be or hope it would be. So my word of caution to you, if you are about to start house hunting as that spring real estate market starts to spring and pop, you may wanna have an honest discussion with yourself what do, how am I going to feel in this home? Am I going to be happy living in a home that's not furnished for three, four, five, ten years? And you may be somebody that says, yes, I just want square footage. I don't care if it's empty for ten years. That's fine. But if you are somebody who says, you know what, that will be like nails on a chalkboard bad for me. So you need to be honest with, well, how much money do I need to save or put aside for the furnishing side of my project? I'll share some more numbers with you in a second. But one thing I'd like you to consider right off the bat is maybe you want to purchase less square footage or move into less square footage. Or maybe you want to think about putting less down on your down payment so that you're securing more or, or safeguarding more for your purchasing side once you move in and you know you're going to want to paint and get a few rooms at least really looking very beautiful the way you've been fantasizing about them when you were doing your new home hunting anyway. So now here come the really scary numbers and don't shoot the messenger. I'm just reporting. So the literature that I see in my industry when we're reading stats, what will a new home buyer end up spending to furnish and fill a new home? Well, it's pretty surprising. Between 12% and 35% of your home's purchase price. Yep, I know I heard a couple of you faint on that one. Yeah, between 12 and 35%. So if you're talking about a $500,000 residence, you can do that math and try to calculate what will it take to furnish and fill that home. Now, you might say, well, listen, how do I get into that 12%? Well, if a lot of what you already own is going to work in that new space, it's sized well, it's going to integrate well, well, you're going to be closer to that 12%. If you are upsizing or going to be moving into a first home, maybe you really have very little that you're bringing with you, or you want to kind of upgrade from the furnishings you already had, maybe you have a lot of starter furniture and you're moving to a maybe your first, uh, just like a townhouse perhaps, and you really want to go for it, well, then you're going to be doing more purchasing. The art, the rugs, all the furnishings, the window coverings, it starts to add up. And those numbers do not even include those homes or residences that you look at that where you say, mm, love it, but I got to knock out that kitchen. Cha-ching, or I have to redo the master bath. Cha-ching, those figures that I just shared with you don't even count that kind of additional renovation cost. So builders are wonderful, realtors are wonderful, but really what they're going to want to do is sell you as much home as, as possible, right? Um, I want to make sure you're going to be as happy as possible in those spaces. And of course, builders and realtors are wonderful and they want to see you happy in those spaces too. But I'm here to be sort of Debbie Downer, I'm sorry to say, on the numbers side. Because in design, nothing can happen without the blessing of the budget. So I just want you to kind of be cautious and keep your eyes wide open as you're doing your home hunting, your house hunting. And for those of you who are already in a home that you've moved into in the last year, perhaps you're feeling some of that frustration as your costs mount. So what I'd like to share with you then is the philosophy of just dial it down, focus on one key space, a space you spend a lot of time in, maybe two spaces, Focus your energy and your budget in those spaces and get them really wonderful and then move on to the next space and the next space and the next space. 
be willing to live with a little bit of dissonance in some rooms that just aren't done that you're not putting any attention into you will feel so much better when you really accomplish something really get beautiful things happening in a very complete way maybe the master bedroom and the family room or maybe the kitchen and the, the living room whatever your really important spaces are get those really done and then you can move on to the next room when funds and energy and time are available as well. So hopefully that will get you a little wiser now about furnishing and filling your new home. So I welcome you to uh, send in some questions. I'm going to start taking some live questions. I do want to just go over a couple of questions that were sent in before this Facebook Live. Um, Elaine had a great question. She wanted to know about a nine foot wide entry, a nine foot wide um, foyer. How wide can my cabinet be? All right, Elaine, so here's the story. And Elaine, I happen to know that you're in one of my private Facebook groups. I don't remember which one, um, but if you're in the Decorating Genius System group, then you should be doing a space plan to figure this out. And if you're not in DGS, I'll give you the, uh, a little quick start here. So I want you to take your nine foot foyer width and I want you to turn it into inches and 109 inches, excuse me, nine feet. You're going to turn nine feet into inches and nine feet turns into 108 inches. So when you think about how wide your console table is, Elaine, consoles tend to be 18 inches wide, maybe 24 inches wide for a cabinet, which leaves you plenty of room so that you have foot traffic or easy passage around that console. So by foot traffic, you know what I mean? You mean I mean how easily can you walk past and enter your beautiful home? So if I take out my phone here and I just do 108 inches minus 24 inches, let's say you have a pretty cabinet, that leaves you 84 inches. You've got, you know, seven feet to really move beautifully around that. Now, here's where it gets a little dicey. Let's say you say, you know, Donna, I look at Pinterest, and I really love those foyers that have a beautiful center hall table. All right. Center hall tables, generally speaking, if you're lucky and the goddess of design is on your side, maybe, maybe, maybe you can find a 36-inch. I know you can because... I'm searching for that small uh, table for a, a center hall on a project I'm working on right now, and it's not easy to find 36-inch tables. Right away, they want to go to 42, 46, 48. Anyway, so Elaine, you've got 108 inches, right? Let's say you, we took a beautiful 42-inch table and we put it in that center hall. That gives you 66 inches around that table in total. So if we divide it by two, that means you have 33 inches on either side to move around that 42 inch table. I'm gonna tell you that's gonna feel kind of tight. Now, the National Kitchen and Bath Association says that it's allowable to have 36 inches at three feet as pass-through space when you're doing and designing a kitchen. And I agree with that. However, 42 feels a lot better, particularly where furnishings are concerned and where key pass-through areas are concerned. So, Elaine, I want you to pick up some quarter-inch sketching paper. Um, what's it called? Drafting paper? So whatever. Quarter-inch. Quarter-inch. Drafting paper. Drafting paper. <laughs> All right. Katie likes that. Drafting paper. Drafting paper. Trace paper. Trace paper. Um, mm -hmm. And I want you to plot out your room, and then I want you to measure out what your furniture shapes would be, or do an online program if you're techie by all means, and just make sure you're protecting a good 42 inches to move around that table if you put something in the center of the room. And if you do a console, you've got plenty of space, so no problem there. Hopefully that helps you, Elaine. And then Linda wanted to know how to find a 60 to 72 inch console table that's turquoise. Oh, Linda, talk about a needle in a haystack search. Well, here are some things you can do. Um, and I'm going to mention manufacturers, guys. I don't know where you can find them, but you can Google in your area to see if they sell to manufacturers, uh, to stores in your area. Um, Katie reminded me that Redford House has a great turquoise finish, and they have some really interesting product manufactured in California, so you can look that at them. Woodbridge Furniture, don't know if that's your taste or style, but they have implemented a, um, a paint-your-own kind of program, so you can pick out any, I think it's Sherwin or Ben Moore color, put it on there. And uh, beyond that, there are some wonderful wrapped tables that like faux chagrin type of products. Some of them are just really beautiful, but finding turquoise, pretty specific. 
So Linda, it's possible that you're going to end up buying something at a flea market or through one of the resources I just mentioned and painting it yourself to get that beautiful turquoise color. And if you want to do it with a furniture grade finish, then you can just hire a painter and ask him or her to do it to a furniture grade and do a couple of nice coats of a varnish on top. So hopefully that helps you as well. And I see that some questions are coming in. And if you have a question, by all means, zip it out here. Joanne is saying, hi, Donna. Hello, Joanne. Joyce is saying, hi. Hello to you. Well, hello to everybody. I'm not going to read you out specifically, but I appreciate your hellos, but I want to get to as many questions as possible. Cynthia wants to know, hello, would you recommend the over-the-counter drapery um, country curtains, restoration hardware, pottery barn, etc. You know, Cynthia, um, I could do a couple of workshops on just window coverings, and I may just do that. But for now, let me tell you this. In life, you get what you pay for. You will never get something less for less. Well, no, you, you'll, never, you'll never get something for less. You'll get something less for less. I really should have hooked up my brain and my teeth before I came out here for this Facebook Live. Sorry, guys, but it is live. Anyway, Cynthia, if you want to pay less, you're going to get lesser workmanship, lesser product, lesser quality. That's just how it is. Now, if you have the bucks to spend, I do think that Restoration Hardware does nice product within that price point for ready-mades. I do. Um, if you can go into semi-custom, I think that Smith & Noble can do a nice product. However, I will say... And again, please, if you're on the board of restoration or you're the board of um, Smith & Noble, please don't write me a hate letter. I will say that I have had um, instances where I've heard of, of people who were not happy with some of the installers that they used from a cataloger like Smith & Noble. Now, what you need to know is that Smith & Noble just contracts with local installers. So what I would do, because I think, again, I think Smith & Noble does a nice product, I would just ask for a few installer names in your area and call those installers and say, hey, can I talk to some of your references and find out who the better installers are and then decide who you want to have work with you in your area. So if you're going to be doing ready-made or semi-custom, uh, semi that's what I would recommend to you, um, Cynthia, and hopefully that um, works well for you, okay? And also something great, you know, I, you can always go for the wood blinds, wood shutters, and matchstick blinds, a great look, not a high-cost product. It can be really beautiful, whether layered with drapery or just on its own. So hopefully that, that helps answer that for you, Cynthia. Okay, Lee wants to know, uh, I really enjoyed Ikea's 100% linen drapes, and they're washable. So Lee doesn't want to know that. She's telling us that. Thank you for the tip. Check out Lee's suggestion for Ikea 100% linen drapes. Um, listen, I love linen, too. Here's the thing I want you to know. Make sure that with your design fingerprint, you're comfortable with a little bit of crinkle, a little bit of wrinkle. Linen will not go into military straight the way a cotton will. And if you try steaming linen, linen as a fiber will absorb 150% of its weight. Why do I remember that kind of nonsense from graduate from um, design school? I don't know. I don't even remember what I had for breakfast two days ago, but that kind of stuff sticks in my head. 150 times its weight. So what that means is that fiber fills and fills and fills. So the fabric starts to stretch and stretch and stretch. What that means for you is if you hang linen drapes and you oversteam them, you're going to start to create a lot of puckering and weirdness on that fabric. And if it's an embroidered linen, you're going to really make that fabric look really strange. So just be careful with linen. Make sure that you like that look with that little bit of crinkle to it. Okay, other questions. Oh, Rhonda's telling me it was craft paper. <laughs> Thank you, Rhonda. You know what, Rhonda? Katie and I have been living at the Philadelphia Design Center and the New York Design Center these last couple of days. And we're, what are we, smushed, pooped? We're just exhausted. We're exhausted. <laughs> we think our last marble rolled away about a couple of hours ago. But thank you, Rhonda, for that graph paper. Thank you. Um, 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 Martina's in from vacation. Love my teaching style. Thank you. I'm glad you like my teaching style. Um, let's see. Nancy, is the new luxury vinyl used on floors to a designer like margarine to a cook? <laughs> That's so, so cute. Is the new luxury vinyl used on floors to a designer like margarine to a cook? Ah, Nancy, you know what? Um, you know, I remember, Nancy, when I walked through my first really big residence that I was going to be designing, and I remember when they walked me into the second sunroom slash conservatory, I thought, who needs two sunroom conservatories? And then I thought, wait a minute, Donna, yours is not to judge, yours is to serve. And so I just kind of look at it that way. So 
I serve whatever budget I'm on as a designer and I want you to do that as well. And I want you to go for as beautiful a look as you can have and create for yourself. And I want you to work to your budget. It's nobody's beeswax where that budget, you know, came from as I teach, right? It's everybody's budget, you know, business to serve your budget. So um, I think some of the vinyl product is actually looking better and better. I do. We don't do a ton of it with the customers and clients that we're dealing with. Um, it, you know, the residents' values and sizes that we're working on in our company are such that clients are not necessarily going there. But I've, I, you know, when I'm doing CPE classes, when I'm in showrooms, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed by a lot of what I'm seeing there. So I can't give you a lot of firsthand knowledge of the product, I'll be honest with you, but I have no problem with it. And I, I wouldn't call it margarine. The only thing that's margarine to a designer, and this is going to bother some of you, but I'm going to tell you, uh, ready-made window draperies. There is nothing like the look of a custom window drapery. Nothing for fullness, styling, hanging height, dressmaker details, fabric, fabric quality, interlining, just nothing like it. So that's the only thing where I would say designers kind of have our pension for, you know, for the, the good stuff there because we get to play in those sandboxes. Um, what is the bet? Okay, Tiffany wants to know, oh, Joy, Joyce wants to know, what is a good fabric for drapes that will hang well? Um, cottons, cotton blends are easy peasy. They hang really well. Polys, if you like them, if you see something like in a faux silk, if that's the look you're going for. Um, but cottons are probably the most popular product or fiber used in home fabric and does a beautiful hang, beautiful drape. If you've got some bucks to throw at your project, wool, mm, the drape of wool is spectacular. Spectacular. Certain beautiful drapery velvets, a uh, fantastic drape, fantastic hand. Give me a gorgeous, you know, dupioni silk, mm, very fussy fabric, hates water, doesn't like sunlight. Um, but cotton is a great go to, and a cotton blend, a cotton that's been um, woven with some poly will, should hang well for you as well. Okay. Linen, like I was saying earlier, can get a little bit on the crinkly side. Great look if you're doing, you know, rustic, rustic glam, um, farmhouse, but just make sure that you're going to be happy with what that fabric does, what its um, characteristics are. The analogy I use with clients is to say, listen, Carrera marble has veins in it. If you don't like veins, don't do Carrera marble. Do something in quartzite. So hopefully that answers you as well, Joyce. Okay, Tiffany, what is your best tip? Tiffany wants to know for choosing paint color for a wall in my family room, trying to decide between grays or creams, I need to keep my brown leather couches. Um, Tiffany, you know, that's such a, a short question, but it's a giant question. Um, paint color selection is one of the key screw-up points for all DIY design lovers. Every designer will tell you when you mess up your wall color, there's no coming back. Um, I don't see pictures of your room, Tiffany. I don't know what your design fingerprint is, so it would be terrible from, I don't know what your rugs are, your other fabrics, your adjoining rooms, blah, 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 blah. It's like pulling a thread, right? So I would do a terrible disservice to tell you what color you should put on your walls, but I'll tell you how to select the right color. Make sure that you are swatching colors. Make sure that you swatch your color in four different places of your room before you paint it because it will change from wall to wall if there's a lot of uh, background um, sunlight coming in over your shoulder. A paint color will look different than when it's put right next to a window and you're staring into it and all of that sunlight. So make sure you're swatching. Make sure when you look at paint, um, whether on a deck or a chip, don't look at it down. Look at it up. That's how you're going to see the color. You're going to see it on that plane, not the horizontal plane, and color changes, Tiffany, based upon uh, what direction you're viewing it in. So hopefully those little tips will get you working wisely, and I encourage you to look at your design fingerprint, what kind of wall colors are you really attracted to in all of your craving images, okay? So hopefully that'll help you there. Alrighty, Paula wants to know, I'm on a budget and looking for blinds or matchstick for windows from 15 wide to 48 wide suggestions. Um, I, I would try, um, Smith & Noble does matchsticks, don't they, Katie? We believe they do. Um, again, I don't have any relationship with Smith & Noble, um, but uh, like I said, for, for semi-custom product, I think they, they do well within their category to deliver what they say they're delivering. So I would, I would take a look there and, and see what you can find. Uh, we have time for two more questions. Katie is reminding me because we have some appointments to get to. I have a... I have a gala committee 
meeting to get to, which sounds so fancy schmancy, but all I'm doing is stuffing envelopes, but it's a big fundraiser I'm involved in, so I know I have press time. So thank you, Katie, for reminding me. We have time for two more questions. Um, Lee wants to know, any ideas on updating a bedroom of cherry furniture, sleigh bed, and two nightstands? Is this totally out of style? Lee, it's not totally in style. Um, here's what I think you can do to it. I think you can break up the set, um, maybe keep the headboard and add some new nightstands and then pretty new dresser, or maybe you want to keep the nightstands and build around that. Breaking up that suite might help to lighten things up, or maybe you want to do an upholstered headboard, keep the nightstands, and then do a beautiful new dresser. Maybe that can help you as well. Um, but yes, the Queen Anne, that Queen Anne cherry, that cherry, that cabriole leg, not the, the biggest trending idea right now, but I will tell you that, you know, traditional never goes away. It may not be the heaviest trending in certain markets, but traditional is traditional. And I just got some price quotes from the New York Design Center on two gorgeous pieces. One is for that center hall table I was looking at, telling you about earlier, perfect size. It's somewhat traditional. It's beautifully done with veneers and inlays and um, looks like marquetry inlay. Um, so a traditional piece here or there in that bedroom, Lee, might be just perfect. Just try to break up the set. And maybe you want to move some of what is currently in that master bedroom into a guest room and move it around that way. Or there's always the option to do some um, uh, painting and, and refinishing as well. Okay, so one more question here. Uh, 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 uh. What is, okay, let's see. Great info. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Latanka wants to know what is the new what what are the new design colors for walls in your house white or question mark well gray is continuing to have its moment I don't see gray going away anytime soon um, and whites are definitely having a moment as well that said Latanka I want you to paint your walls whatever color will make you happy unless you're thinking of moving and you need to sell your apartment sell your home then you want to really stay with those on-trend colors. But I think it was the last time I was out here doing a Facebook Live, I was saying, you know, I, I was painting rooms gray before gray was a thing. I painted my own foyer before gray was a thing. It was just a color. Um, I have color in my home that I've recently painted that is not an on-trend color, but I love it, and I feel great in that particular color. So I don't want you to worry so much about the trends as I do what pleases you, and if you're having a hard time figuring out from the din of noise what to do, start paying attention to your craving images, those images you've been saving, and start noticing what wall colors am I really attracted to, and start building your room out from there. Hopefully that will help you. Okay, my lovelies. Well, as I said earlier, we've got places to go and people to see, but we are here every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, ready to take your questions. Next week, I'm going to start things off by talking about kitchen design, specifically what to expect on the timing of those projects, because I know that this time of year, lots and lots of you are getting the itch to get that kitchen renovation going. You've gone through the whole winter and all the, and the holidays last year, maybe grumbling through that kitchen that wasn't uh, to your total taste. So I know it's on your mind, so I want to help you out with that. And as ever, we're happy to take your questions live. Okay, peeps, I'll see you next Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern. See you then.